Welcome to the Purple Rock Survivor Podcast. I am John, and my passenger in this absolute clown car is Andy, and we are talking the finale of Survivor 41. Andy, let's lead with the headline and give the people what they want. We're massive dummies. Yeah, we know nothing. Yep. Um, At the- least we're really loud about it. But we took a giant L, and look at us, just owning up to it, wearing the clown masks, clown shoes, very comfy fitting clown shoes. <laughs> They're familiar. I, I had them around from Ko Rong. I just pulled them back out of the closet and threw them on again. The important thing about Ko Rong is we learn nothing. Nothing. Just not a <laughs> single thing. I, I mean, the key is to just move on having not improved in any way. I I actually feel like we did. I think we were a little less antagonistic in this sense. And it's probably also because, for one, we weren't cheering as much for somebody else. And, um, no, I, 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 li- I thought Erica seemed very nice, so I didn't want to criticize that. Um, <laughs> uh, I felt like I, we hedged a bit more. Uh, we absolutely did not in Slack, though. That, and that's one thing I'm trying to figure out is, like, how much did we go in publicly? Because on Slack, we were like, oh, man, everybody's stupid but us. And no, no, we are the stupid. That is, yep. that's actually how it turned out. Yeah, that's the thing is we we generally try to keep our um, <laughs> really antagonistic takes out of the public. And I don't really recall how many did leap or just uh, flow out of us into podcasts in previous weeks. But yeah. And we by were... the way, this is us trying, by the way. The things that you hear is us trying to be less antagonistic. Yeah. Like, wow. Exactly. This is the toned down version. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there was a certain point in this episode for me. And I think it was actually pretty early on where I was like, oh, shit. Oh, no. And did you get that moment, too? Oh, yeah, like, before she'd even won that immunity. Yeah. I was like, oh, I think Erica... At the very least, I was like, she might win. Like, I was no longer dismissive of that idea. Like, oh, yeah, no, I'm seeing it. And then by the time I'm like, yeah, she's going to win. Yeah, I, I, I will say, but right when they were heading into the final tribal council, I'm like, you know, this actually, I think this could be really up in the air for the first time ever, you know. All three have a shot. But the whole time, I'm like, I, I think she's going to win. And not in, like, that sense of dread, like, I'm going to look like an idiot. Like, that's done. Because, frankly, even if she hadn't won, I think I would have been wrong in my assertion that, like, people were wrong to believe this. She very much felt like she could win very early in this episode. And the one point that I'll disagree with you on there is that when we went into Final Tribal Council, by that point, I'd already realized my uh, Xander bandwagon that I was driving had just rolled off the side of the cliff and burst into flames. I mean, he had really done enough already edit-wise to submarine his game, and then he started talking at Final Tribal. And I was like, well, it's been real. Oh, at Final Tribal Council, there was no doubt what was going down. Other than, like, a few votes here or there. It was already really bad, and it got worse. (laughs) It was just a evolving snowball of shit (laughs) as it was rolling downhill picking up steam i was like this is so terrible like i i feel like an even bigger clown because i had predicted that it would be xander um not that i was rooting for xander i was actually rooting for the opposite so from a rooting perspective i was like okay good that is no longer on the table but i did have the dread of being wrong because i was like oh my god erica's gonna win yeah and look man like we know that we don't actually know shit about this show, right? Like, we're, we're just people who watch it, right? We've never been on it. We never will. We've never, like, talked to people who make the show. We, we've talked of it to some of the people who have been on the show, but I don't know if that really teaches you much more than in, uh, watching it does in the first place. Um, so we, we're aware that our, we're here mostly just to talk like fans, but like, we were so wrong <laughs> that it's, it, it's almost like an extent, existential like my crisis is probably too strong but it's just like why does anyone listen if i like it because that again it's not just about the being wrong we've actually moved away from predictive analysis by and large anyway uh both because we've been wrong a lot but also because we find it less interesting it's not fun than discussing what had happened rather than always uh focusing what will happen because there was a, a period of time Starting with a writer, uh, peaking with Korong, but around that period where like people 
were like hardcore laying down their predictions from like as early as possible and being really you know rigid with it shutting down conversation why are you talking about it whether anybody but ben will win you guys are stupid and it's just like so we moved away from that but it's just the certainty to which we say things at times it's like should should, should we do that or should i hedge more but i feel like the show is better if i'm taking stronger positions but if those stronger positions lead me to be this wrong about something well you know what i'm most concerned about is that you're just Telling people to tune out, you're going to lose us that valuable um, male grooming sponsorship that I was just uh, so excited that we were going to get. We're, we're so close to pushing that across I the was finish line, too. I was so excited to tell the audience about my balls. Um, but as, so as I was watching, and as you said, we've often been switching more to discussing, you know, the story, the, like, narrative arcs and things like that, which I, I, I've gotten more into in the show. And I think... A big part of why this felt really off, and we discussed this a bit last week, is just, if this is the narrative of Erica winning, I was like, how the fuck is this the best possible way to tell that story? And I mean, it's, it wasn't good. I mean, I've seen the end of the story now. I'm, I'm no longer saying, like, what could possibly come out of this. I've seen the end result. It was not a good narrative. I'm assuming you agree with that. Oh yeah, no, I know. I I have a lot to say. I just you know, what, what we already led is I, I'm not doing the you know oh we were wrong, but actually uh, other people were wrong. Like I did that and go wrong. It was lots of fun. No, no, I was wrong, and I think the people who were putting forth the you know the, the argument that Erica was the winner, the one that we were like nah nah, I don't see it. That's wishful thinking. I, I think they were on to something. I just wish, and I tweeted this. Uh, it's like. Why do we always have to hunt so hard when it's a woman winning, right? I guess, I guess the clues were there. People were picking up on it. I do think some of that motivation was that they were trying to get this result, but I think they were finding real things. But usually it just feels like it. You know, you don't need like a degree in Survivor to understand what's happening. And they keep doing it. And, and some people's like, oh yeah, no, they do this with women. That's a bad thing. That's not a good thing. That's not a defense of what the show did. It's just what it is, is that your cynicism that I uh, kind of picked up on last week of like predicting Xander, because you're like, after all of this, it's still just going to be the mediocre white dude. Apparently our cynicism was directed in the wrong way because we believed that Erica didn't have a chance because like the show wouldn't do that again, would they? And a fucking they did. Yes. Right? evolution is not a thing you drop the four at the or keep the one indeed because we're just repeating the cycle here we're going right back to borneo and it it really you expect an evolution because there are certainly some outward signs of that evolution right like we've got a much more diverse cast we're changing the way challenges have been done and they're much more egalitarian now we've got some immunity idol balance now it it seems like trajectory is going in the right direction right and so you're thinking like oh yeah no, they're developing these characters more we're getting to learn about you know their social lives back in the real world and what it's like to grow up in their skin all those things and then some of the biggest stars of this season were women yes and then despite that you get this which was i, I mean yeah I'll, I'll grant you there were clues there I guess. I mean, there were some little notes that suggested, hey, maybe Erica's winning because she said, like, I'm going to be the lamb that turns into the lion. Like, uh, okay. You don't have to read that deeply to see them when, like, Ben was winning. And Ben is not super dynamic, I, more so than Erica, but that's a low bar. But, like, how did you craft a story where I knew Ben was going to win and Ben was a big threat to everybody. And you couldn't do that with Erica? I, I mean, it doesn't have to be no, right? We don't need to know. I like that we didn't know. Sure. Again, but I feel like unless you were super invested or you're like, you know, a specific type of internet fan, you didn't think Erica was going to win because it would have been so easy. They would not have had to do much to keep me on the Erica bandwagon. I went into the season knowing basically one contestant, and that was the one I was cheering for, the first Canadian who actually lived in Canada who also had purple hair. Like, I was ready, man. Right. And then there was nothing. So on brand for us, right? Like, she should have been the ideal rooting interest. And, like, 
when we finally saw her, because I remember it, it was, you know, she's doing the hourglass thing. And I was like, oh, that's Erica. And it felt like I... I'd even seen her a little bit in, um, like a preseason video. I'm like, Oh, you know, she, she could be interesting. I might enjoy her. Saw her at that episode and went, Nope. Turns out I was wrong. Not interesting. And the show does not seem interested in her either. Like it, it really, that content seemed to just exist because it, you know, she did exactly what the show always does. If you say the right words, you will get airtime. So she's like, I changed the course of history. When you lean hard into their twists and their themes and things like that, you get airtime. And so it just felt like, okay, yeah, she said the right words. She got on the TV and now she's going to be backgrounded again while the other people play and someone else wins. Yeah, like that was the big moment. And that's what people uh, pointed to. Now, interestingly, not a single soul pointed to it in the moment. It was after all of the other characters that they had assumed were winning were taken out um, that they finally landed on this. But it was like, I feel like they would have given that spotlight to whoever was yes. on that island who was presented this choice. It was to sell the twist more than the character. And then it's like, oh, well, she got personal content. Well, like, literally everybody, I think, oh, well, I mean, there may be a few of the earliest boots, but anybody who made it, I think, past Merge got, like, a scene like that. Hers wasn't even particularly affecting. Um, so yeah. it's like that didn't really work for me. She did get a little bit before that, um... When they were going to throw a challenge to get rid of her. So that was kind of the first time I noticed. But yeah, like, they they taught me through their edit that she was so unimportant that, like, it honestly it felt stupid to root for something better for her. Especially because there were all these other interesting people, right? So it's like, I, I would be doing the thing that I don't like in other people. That I, I made this preseason favorite and I'm just going to base all my opinions based on that rather than what the show was telling me. And what the show was telling me was that this was not an important character. And again, like, I understand some of the reasoning uh, why she wouldn't get a big edit prior to the merge. Sure. Because I think truly her game didn't take off until post-merge. I believe she is admitted as such that she uh, felt that she was on the bottom uh, within that big tribe so she just Thought she would hang back and wait for her moment. Great. Perfect. Good for you. It worked. Um, so, yeah, I can understand that big, big there. They never went to tribal council. That's going to be a tough one, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to give us something. You have to t t tell the audience who this person is. And even if that comes at the expense of a more interesting character. When it's the winner, you got to do that, man. Well, and not even just at the expense of a more interesting character. At the expense of suspense right like a part of it is you want to maintain an air of mystery of who's going to win at least some reasonable doubt you know like even if it seems pretty likely that a certain person is winning you want to at least leave some doubt in the audience's mind that oh maybe someone else can pull this thing off you know because they're positioned well enough whatever it might be i mean when i think back at the biggest points in my mind that i remembered about erica it was they tried to throw a challenge to get her out she pissed people off by doing the only possible thing she could do and smashing that um, hourglass. And then at the end, she survives because like pure luck, Xander doesn't realize she's terrible at fire. Like it just felt almost like they were shitting on her and she was their winner. <laughs> like even in the end, when I was convinced, I'm like, Oh man, she's going to win. They show her like clumsily hacking away at the flint and Xander's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go up against her. And I, by that point, I already know. I'm like, no, he's not going to take her out with fire and, and she's going to win. And they're still like clowning her in the edit, which just strange. Like it's obviously not the highlight of her season, but it's hard for me to think of other things when there's all of these points. And not that other players didn't have flaws. They certainly did. But I think because other players had more content in my mind, it was easier to, you know, dial some of that back. Like, oh, yeah, they, of course, had bad moments, but there was good stuff mixed in. To me, Erica's was like existing or being bad slash lucky. Yeah, and like that's where people were pointing to because a lot of people also landed on Erica. I'm going to take them at their word here because I was wrong and they were right. So at this point, I should accept it. Uh, that process of illumination, right? 
And I, I saw that. Like, I saw that there were issues in that nobody seemed to be taking Xander that seriously. Uh, it was clear that Deshaun was flailing at times. Um, and then, yeah, Ricard could just as easily go at any moment. That's a tough way to win. Uh, but, and then they didn't see those things in Erica. And I'm like, well, some of that was early on in the season. So I guess it's a bit of recency bias, but recency bias actually might be an important thing in Survivor. Uh, I think people maybe uh, care more about the stuff near the end, possibly. Well, talking about jury members. But I never saw like a lot of the positives. And I think people were overselling. It's like the edit is showing that she's the decision maker. And maybe that's what the edit thought they were doing. And for the people that are really focused on it, it worked. Um, but it's like, for me, it always felt like she was the one that they could get indecisiveness out of, not somebody that was deciding who goes and who stays, you know? So like Xander knew that he didn't want Ricard going. He explained why he didn't want Ricard going. So that didn't have that, well, will it be Ricard or will it be Liana? Um, so I, I didn't know that she was like the swing vote so much as, you know, she just voted with everybody. And again, it feels like that's what she wanted to do. Like, I'm not saying that she lucked her way in. I'm just saying the edit didn't really feature her enough. But for me, like, they just needed to do a, enough to establish her as a character at the beginning of the season so that I wouldn't have written her off. Because then maybe the stuff of the second half would feel more like something. But it was just like, I'd written her off because the show told me to. So and it's not just me. I have my own bias, obviously. Anybody who's listened to the show probably has ideas of what it is. I would say it's, I tend to gravitate towards more proactive players. That was always true. It became more true when I have like a weekly hour long discussion about the show. I was like, get the people who do stuff for me to talk about. That's somebody I'm more biased towards. However, it's like, it's not just me. My wife. Didn't give a crap about Erica. And it's like, man, if you think I'm primed to cheer for the first Canadian, you know, how is it the show was able to craft a narrative so that my wife didn't care about a Canadian uh, Asian woman? And it's just, she didn't know who she was. So I, I'm, I'm proud of everybody. You guys are very smart who picked up on the subtle clues. But why did it have to be so fucking subtle? You could have just given us a little bit more without giving the store away. But the show just doesn't care about like female winners, it seems like, and I don't know what to do with that. Well, and because so to, um, you know, I do exactly. And so to put it in some contrasting light here, like I think the rough equivalent to Erica here was Adam, right? Adam and uh, millennials versus Gen X, the quote unquote bigger players of the season, the players that the show had told us were the better players that we should be like, oh, wow, Zeke is amazing and active and David, he's so clever and like, wow, he's going to make it to the end. Someone's got to beat him. Like they're all gone and they get to the final tribal council and Adam wins handily, which didn't entirely come out of nowhere because at least over the season, we'd seen some content about Adam, right? Even if it was just him being extremely loud or talking about his mom and his family situation. Like we had some sort of content with Adam and maybe it's just because they'd given us personal content about almost everybody that Erica's didn't really stand out <laughs> to make her any sort of developed character. It just, I feel like there was at least something you could have done to keep her present in our minds. You know, even if it was just, Mention her Canadianness. Give give us something that's putting her not even front of mind, just in our mind, in the background. Because to me, she was on a tier with Heather where she was completely forgettable for large chunks of the season. I think her and er Heather, until the very end, were the two least featured characters of the season. I don't even think that's a thought. I'm sure the stats uh, back it up. And then, yes, she comes out at the end, and that's, again... People picked that up on it. I didn't. But for me, it was like, yeah, well, there's fewer people now. <laughs> like it's, It was less, to me, a story about her coming on to win than it was just like, well, now they got more time to devote to these people. Like Heather's edit also came on comparably in the end from what, what had been before. Um, yeah, and, and like Adam was one of the featured characters of his season. He just didn't feel like a contender. He felt frankly, more like a, a loser um, until he was not. Um, I, just, I don't know if any men get this treatment. 
Like, even a Fabio was a featured character of the season. Maybe Bob a bit. Like, I think, you know, everybody knew who Bob was, but some of that is demographically. Like, he just, and, uh, he seemed like the least shitty person around. <laughs> um, but, like, I don't think the show ever does this to men, and some men, are under the radar players. Tommy was not particularly interesting, but there was never a time when I didn't know who he was or wrote off the chance that he could win. I was, in fact, pretty sure that he was going to win. So it's just like they do this only to women's games. And yeah, I I accept that Erica's happened late. So don't give her like game content early because the game wasn't happening as much on that tribe. But like, don't make her a stranger, man. Like, it's, she's the winner. You know, and we... We harped on this. So the thing we were mostly wrong about was uh, people believing that she could win. And we were like, ha, 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 you fools. You uh, absolutely correct fools, you. <laughs> but the other thing is, like, we came after the people saying that, like, the, the edit, or, or, you know, it's not editing the characters well. And we're like, no, they're doing a really great job with most of these characters. Sure, there's a couple. There's always a couple. Turns out we were wrong about that, too, because the couple <laughs> involved the winner and her number one ally, you know, and I, again, I like, I don't know if Heather needed much more because I think she was no. probably boring, but if most of the winner's game involves Heather, then maybe she should have also been part of it, even if it was just their scenes together. And see, even then, I, I'm fine with Heather being sidelined to the degree that she was. All you needed was a little bit more Erica content. And I get, like, Erica is not the most dynamic of people. I would say she's actually a little more so than Adam, but that's because of my own bias. And I think Adam fucking sucks as television. Um, but again, they managed to make it work with Adam. Like they gave him some time on television. Tommy, again, similarly, wildly undynamic character, but it, they got him some airtime somehow. You know, even if it was just saying the bland shit that you have to say, like, oh, I'm really excited about. Yeah, the, all the shit that they did for Michelle, like, I don't feel like we even got that with Erica. Like, oh, I can't wait to eat steak. Uh, okay, I guess. I mean, but in in episodes to remind us that she exists. And I get pre-merge. It, what are you going to do with a tribe that keeps winning? And you have to, of course, tell the Michelle story. Michelle was on that. She never went to tribal council either. And some people were like, well, they didn't want to do what they did with Michelle. Where uh, it, she, they tipped off the winner. They did not tip off the winner in Korong, people. <laughs> Spoilers tipped off the winner of Korong. <laughs> or, you know, again, if we want to be fair and you know just concede, you know, a very specific subset of fans tipped off the winner. Most people never thought she was going to win. That's why there was an uproar when she did. And it's the same thing happening now. So, yeah, even if they just did the Michelle shit, then it'd be like, for one, then I would have been such an ass about people believing it. Because I would have been like, okay, well, I, it, this happened with Michelle. Part of the reason why I didn't think Erica is like, she hasn't even gone Michelle's edit. Right. <laughs> you know, when you're aspiring to Michelle's edit, you have not been featured. Right. Like I, yeah. I saw the um, at least the snippet of the exit interview with Erica, and it, she mentioned the edit, and she said something about like, oh, you know, she was actually proud of it, and um, maybe it's just that people have been watching the show wrong this whole time, and I was like, oh, oh no, we're we're not going down that path. <laughs> Come on, it, like maybe it's her very Canadianness that is preventing her from saying that, but like the show fucked you, Erica. It. You needed more content. And I'm not even saying I necessarily wanted to see more of Erica on my screen, but I needed to see something in order to be invested in her as a winner, in order to think that she had played any kind of game. And I get that it's very hard to show a under the radar, quote unquote, social game. And I don't even know that this was that much of a social game. We'll get that in, to that in a little bit. But we just gave you examples of previous winners that they managed to do it with. So it's not some impossible Herculean task. Like these editors and producers could have figured out a way. Yeah. It's just, I just needed a little bit. Yep. Like, they robbed me of the chance to cheer for a fellow Canadian. And I've been making up for that since by just pretending like I was rooting for her all the way. But it's like, <laughs> they, I did not need much, but they gave me nothing. They told me, don't get your hopes up, uh, hoser. I don't know. Is that what they call us? Uh, and I was like, okay, fine. Uh, there's plenty of interesting people. I'll rather focus on them. Like, 
yeah, Lou Hu didn't go very much, but the Sean still got a lot of time pre-merge. And look, he was a finalist. It makes sense. But again, maybe give the winner stuff. Even if you have to lose something good, they won. She won. First woman in seven seasons. And she was like, hey, here I am at the end. That's, that, that's not cool. That kind of sucks. That also leads to some introspection. Of like, what do I do with a show? Um, this problematic, you know, I've, I've, I've accepted a lot of stuff, but now with the knowledge that when a woman wins, uh, you, you, you gotta get out the magnifying glass to be able to see it. That's fucking sucks. And you know what? We've, we've talked about it before, how the, um, the survivor diversity campaign did get the show casting to change. And I had said, you know, the next frontier is not casting. It's the production of the show. Like you need people in charge of crafting the narratives of the show to have diverse backgrounds and perspectives and things like that. As far as the last I knew, it is heavily male. I, I mean, we'll yeah. leave race aside, just going with heavily male. Cause it's probably the most relevant here. You have to have someone around who can say like, Hey, you know, guys, I get that there's subtle clues here and it, it's not the most flashy game, but we should probably highlight this point or this point or something else about Erica. You have limited time, but they've man, they managed to give Xander a lot of content and Xander is, you know, he's 20. He has a few lines that he said that were interesting, but you could have cut some of that to give Erica something. Yeah. Yeah, I love how his, uh, you know, hardship personal content was, I was a teenager recently. You know, I, I was insecure. Yeah, you were a teenager, man. <laughs> Unless you're some kind of sociopath, all teenagers are insecure. It's what happens when everything about you is changing and you understand nothing. I did love that we finally got some cross-country content on Survivor, though. Like, oh, bravo. It's about time. 41 seasons in. So excited. Have my favorite the, sport the diversity shouted out. Campaign finally put uh, finally gave something. That's to right. <laughs> finally, someone like you can see themselves on the screen. Exactly, representation matters. Finally, it's happened for me. Another thing we were wrong about yes. is we kept saying people are complaining way too much about these advantages and twists. They really haven't done that much this season. Uh, two things. First off, uh, one thing we were saying is like. You guys are saying there's no character work, but these advantages and the way they're don't laying them out is creating character work. And that was true. Yep. The problem is, is that it restricted character work to the people who were sent to that island. And Erica wasn't one of them. Like, even just that, they couldn't develop the winner because, you know, it like if she had gone prior to the hourglass thing, if she had gone instead of, you know, uh, Deshaun or Sydney or something. Sydney. Then we probably would have yeah, gotten sure. something, right? We probably would have gotten enough there that we wouldn't have been like, this is a nothing character. Like, the conversation about Heather prior to the merge was fury at her not being featured in the show. She's a winner, you know? So I do think that actually ended up being a big problem in that while it was really nice, the stuff we got, it wasn't organic in who they could feature. You needed to be in that situation to get that moment. And that might have also led to some of the imbalance uh, pre-merge. And then, of course, the other problem is um, the winner of the season was saved by the dumbest twist. And no, <laughs> all the people who have been complaining all season long about the advantages, I haven't seen a lot of them being like, oh man, the, this whole, the whole thing was turned up by, you know, because they're so happy that a woman won that they're not being like, oh man, this is bullshit. She shouldn't even be there. Yeah, it's one of those winning solves all problems things. And, yeah. And hey, like man, if, if it takes time travel for a woman to finally win this season, then fuck it. But that's how it should be. Yeah. Next season, we're smashing two hourglasses. <laughs> and she has said in her own exits, and this is fair, that uh, it was also unfair to her that she was on that island at the merge. Like, maybe that's the only reason why she was a target. So maybe it balanced out that way. There's that. She also won an immunity challenge at the end by finding an advantage. So, like, I I think uh, for all the advantages, most of which, you know, misfired or didn't have anything Nobody benefited them more than the winner. So apparently they actually did shape the season pretty significantly. Yep. Who knew? Um, the one thing I will say about the earlier point you're making about the, you know, we had certain people go off on these little advantage twists, whatever high care character development moments. It, to their credit, 
they did manage to spread the wealth around on that. It wasn't the same people going every time. Just somehow, despite the odds, they managed to not get Heather in that group. So, I mean, we got, I think, the bulk of the cast on those. The majority, at the very least, I would say probably close to 70%. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just unlucky that she didn't get one of those moments and that the moment that she did was her interacting with absolutely no one other than Jeff Probst very briefly. Not exactly yeah. the biggest, you know, character building moment. Yeah, but it's like not just that she like if she if she had gotten one, it would have worked out better for the season. But it robs them of an opportunity of giving her one at camp. Yeah, because they need to give that to you know Liana or something. And again, like a lot of them were good moments. The, the Liana Shine one was a very good moment. But I would argue nobody else in the season mattered as much as Erica, and we didn't get it. She won. Not she didn't just win. She crushed. It wasn't close, and yet. I didn't realize it was going to happen until the uh, the finale episode. And well, again, a lot of that is on me, but it's not all on me. My whole judgment of why she couldn't win was that the show told me she couldn't win for like, I don't know, eight episodes? Uh, and my, my fault for uh, believing them. Uh, and uh, uh, to, to go back to what she was saying, maybe it is kind of a nice thing that because of this, we will dismiss fewer characters chances of winning it will preserve more chances but like it sucks that she had to be the guinea pig for this <laughs> like, right you don't need to be that pioneer the first woman in seven years you know we could have done that with tommy i would have been super happy to have it done with tommy tommy was one of the least dynamic characters they've had in fucking years there's a chance he is my least favorite winner of all time i've never done that list but like his win uh, and I mean, at that point, it was the smallest of potatoes of the problems of that season. Right. But his win just catalyzed everything I hate and worry about Survivor. And uh, this is like, oh, so this really is a show where you have to work hard at sucking at everything so that you don't get voted out. And I, I mean, I don't know that this season really <laughs> says otherwise, but I, I, can't, I can't even criticize her win or, or praise it. And I know that in the years to come, she will be built up as one of the greatest survivor players ever, unless, uh, this breaks the fucking streak and we actually just get more women winners, uh, to talk about. And it's just, my point is, I don't know. They didn't give us enough. And the stuff that people are pointing to, it's like, that's nice. I don't know that it's much different than other people. She voted with a bunch of people to get rid of people who were more dangerous than she and the other people. Ah, what a mastermind. But yeah. also, good for her, I guess. Yeah, I mean, how does that necessarily separate her from Liana or Heather or like... Well, Leanna did not vote out the other people. She got voted out. That, that's the thing, right? <laughs> right. So that is the one very specific way. Um, but I'm just saying, like, there was nothing to make her stand out. And, I, and again, I get it's under the radar. That's the entire concept is, like, it's a subtle game. But they got to the end and the jury seemed pretty convinced. Like, oh, why didn't you take Erica out? She seemed clearly like she was going to win. Xander obviously did not get that <laughs> that uh insight. But at the same time, if they all thought it, I mean, we'd seen them talking about Ricard, like, oh, my God, you got to take out Ricard. He's amazing. No one ever mentioned this about Erica until they're at Final Tribal Council. There had to have been some content, right? And nothing. We got nothing. Yeah. I mean, what we got last week was like Heather, the winner of the season herself, being like, what if they don't think I'm any better than Heather? Like, You mean Erica, the winner this season, by the way. You just oh, yeah. got the winner wrong, which I will not blame you for because she was featured about as much as Heather for the bulk this season. Yeah, again, it picked up at the end. Yes. Uh, and for me, it's like, well, I mean, being more interesting than Heather isn't the hugest bar to cross. I don't know. But again, I was wrong. People saw it, and uh, I was wrong to uh, dismiss their views on this so hard. But my greater point is Survivor was wrong to make me think this, and that's not just me uh, passing the buck. <laughs> but it's like this – I literally didn't think she could win because of what the show told me early in the season. That was my whole thing. Once it was 
After that, it's like, yeah, it's fine that she's uh, more active, but they wouldn't do this to the winner. They would not do this to the first woman to win in seven years. And fuck, was I wrong about that? Yeah, and I had made the observation um, at some point, I think, last night. And I did not tweet this publicly, but, like, it felt like this season was edited by someone who watched the Harry Potter movies and thought that the, that was the story of Neville. Like, well, okay. I mean, I guess technically – like Neville, the seeds were there, man. Yeah, like if you looked in the right places, you knew you had the hints. Like I, I mean, yeah, but it wasn't really his story. And you know, spoiler alert for a old movie and book series at this point. But you know, maybe don't give that lady your money. She's got some bad takes. Yeah, I never read those books, and man, did that pay off, right? Yes. Like I, just, I there's something I knew. I knew. <laughs> That I could not read that hateful woman stuff, and I, I won. I won. Yeah. Who knew that apparently all other authors are hateful because you're not reading their books either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It, it just just uh, hedging my bets. You never. I, I, you can't be too sick. That's right. <laughs> all authors must be trash. It's like a cab, but for authors. Um, yeah. The Harry Potter thing just felt to me like, you know, yeah, there was clearly signs that Neville was like the chosen one or whatever. But it certainly was not the story of Neville. That's not what a seven book arc was about. And similarly, like, yeah, Erica won and she was definitely had moments and there were some hints if you were looking in the right places. But man, this was just not the story of Erica. Like, and it doesn't have to be the story of Erica. Just don't make it the story of other people failing and then by association, Erica in a relative sense looks better than them. Like, it just, it was a bad look. I just, I did not enjoy it. Like I said, we've had so much progress and just this feels icky at this point. This should have been an awesome moment. And yep. yeah, for some people it still is. I'm happy for you. I, 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 I'm happy for her. I'm happy for Canada. <laughs> but I am not happy with how this story was treated. Um, how do you feel about the finale, though? Uh, I mean, it. Which specific part? At like how we I don't know. Handle- just in general, as an episode of TV, we got I got the non uh, after show portions. Was, was, okay. Were you entertained? Was it because I was? I don't know. I was actually going to get into the after show portions, but we'll save that for later. Um, I, I mean, as a whole, fine. I think <laughs> I was telegraphed extremely early that Ricard was not going to last, and then, like I said, I got enough Eric content early on that I went. Oh my God, this is really happening. So it, it kind of took the mystery out of it, out of it for me. I mean, it didn't necessarily for my wife because we're still getting into tribal council at the end. And she's like, Oh man, this could be close. And I'm like, I don't actually think it's going to be close. And this was before they even started asking questions. And so, I mean, I guess to some people there was mystery preserved, but to me at that point, I think it seemed like such a dramatic shift in focus to Erica. And yes, there's only five people left. You don't have so many options. But at the same time, I was like, ah, oh, Erica is weirdly prominent now, all of a sudden. And then I was like, oh man, this is really how they're going to show Erica winning. And it wasn't a dramatic thing. Like I, this sort of happened with Natalie Anderson, right? Where at the very end, she comes on strong. Erica didn't come on strong. She just got a little bit more presence. And it was, I don't know. It, 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 did I like the finale? No, not really. And because of that, like, just, it didn't fit narratively with the rest of what I'd seen this season. Yeah, it was fine. Often finales aren't that interesting. And again, like I said, I thought going in, it's like, maybe this could be close. You know, maybe there, you could make arguments for all three, which I don't think has ever happened, but. It would be ignoring a lot of the evidence of this specific episode. Right. Frankly, it was like my argument for Deshaun being a potential winner, despite all of the flaws he's shown recently, it was just like, well, he's the most featured character, so he'll just be a flawed winner. Because I just didn't feel like the others were strong enough. For Xander, why I never dismissed his chances of winning. It was just like, maybe he'll still do something. But the, as the episode went on, it's like, he still hasn't done much. Uh, he won a challenge uh, and then made a weird choice that we'll we'll get into. Actually, let's get into it now. We, we'll, yeah. we can talk about Ricard later. Uh, he really big burying that thing, huh? Oh, let's fucking bury Xander because this was like, honestly, like a Drew Christie level 
like clowning of an episode for him. Just it, the big braining, the fire making thing was not the only <laughs> stupid shit he did. <laughs> I mean, yes, that one was pretty bad because I, Heather is the one you take. Like yeah. that's a no brainer. We're overthinking this here. This is <laughs> exactly. If you are going to be there yourself, what you've earned the right to do. That's what the challenge was about. You, you make sure that the person you know you can beat, and I guess maybe he didn't know that, um, is there with you, and you let the rest uh, worry about itself. Well, I mean, even then, you have two options. You know, you take the person that you know you can beat, or you have someone that you clearly need to beat, and maybe it's worthwhile to take the risk and try to take them out with fire. Again, that's a high-risk play, but it's a thing that you might need to do. He clearly did not think he needed to do that and was convinced that he could beat, I'm guessing, all three of them. Because otherwise, you know, he didn't seem too concerned about Deshaun. He brought Erica with him. And so then what was the logic behind, like, he needs Heather to take out Deshaun? I mean, his his own yeah. professed logic is like, oh, I didn't want to give Erica that moment. Well, you know what? You did see that she fucking sucks at fire making. Here's how you don't give her that moment. Just beat her right there. <laughs> Had to be a better way to say that. Um, beat her at fire making right there. Um, but even then, th- that was not his only bad moment. It, it, he gets in front of that jury before even the final tribal council. And he's talking about, oh, Heather's a goat. And just laying out all the shit that you're not really supposed to say. You can say it in post-game interviews if you want. <laughs> but it was very much like a game body gross thing and all these other people are talking about emotions and Xander's just coldly laying these things out and people are like hmm you have terrible reads on the game you're just trashing people to their face and trying to make it seem like you're not doing so it was awful I I was cringing for that kid well I actually think with Heather he was trying to say she's not a goat you guys might think she's a goat Mm -hmm. but I actually think she's he's really she's good and in that sense maybe he's trying to butter her up for her jury vote. It wasn't yeah. too bad. It, it was convoluted. And yeah, like this episode really crystallized it. And it had been there all season. Is He's somebody who's watched the show a bunch and had lots of ideas about what he would do when you get there. And sometimes it felt clever, right? Like we thought his reasoning about why he let Erica uh, take his spot in the challenge. It's because I want to be with the losers. Right. That's, that was that's clever. clever. That seemed clever. Yep. But... Um, it didn't translate because everybody else was just like, look at this fucking guy. Right? Yep. He does. You're not fooling anybody. Like your card has even been like, he was so nice. I thought it felt inauthentic, which, uh, you know, says something I think about Xander. I think it also says something about Ricard. <laughs> uh, um, that guy was a game bot. Um, see, this is why I thought Ricard was very relatable. I was like, mm-hmm, yep. yes. no, I get it. <laughs> Oh, and that's from Exit. I, too, also have no emotions other than when it comes to my children, which is what happened yeah. with Ricard. <laughs> so. um, but, yeah, and so, like, I think he's thinking, and this probably comes from watching, like, Edge of uh, Extinction. Yeah. Where Chris, that was one of his big resume points, is he won fire because he didn't have much else. Right. What else could he point to? Uh, real quick, I wonder who got a bigger edit in their season, uh, Chris or Erica. Oof. I might still, I might give that to Erica, but it's it's a a closer call that I, I would like because I, Chris was definitely far more featured prior to being voted out than she was in those early episodes. Right, I don't know that I would give that to Erica. I think you you might have made a really good point there. I think it might be actually Chris, and Chris was a player for like four episodes. I mean, again, and I mean, he got time on. Uh, Edge of Extinction, oh, sure, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he read his note on a rock. That's when we knew he was going to win. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, frankly, it's hard to say because uh, a lot of uh, Chris screen time was very distracting for other reasons. <laughs> I don't even remember. I was like, yeah, so Xander, I think in his mind, that's his thought, is that I can't let this person who is I'm closest, my closest competition, I think he felt was Erica. He just thought it was closer than it was, right? I don't think in his brain he felt he had to take her out. Uh, much like I think Dom made the, I think, completely rational decision that he didn't have to take Wendell out. He had a chance against him. It was close. Yeah. And he thought that giving Erica that big moment would push her over the top. So if I take away that moment, then I'll be able to 
argue my case and discuss all the things I did. And yeah, I think everything, he just had the bigger thoughts when it's just like, you never did anything that interested people. Because I, I get, I don't know if t- he would have won had he uh, put Erica in fire. Even if he take, I think if he takes her out himself, maybe just because nobody really seemed interested in voting for Heather or Deshaun. Right. Um, yeah, we but, assume that in that scenario, Heather's the zero vote finalist. So it just comes yeah. down to Xander or versus one. You know, Deshaun. she could. Get, I, I bet she would get Erica's. You know, um, mm, maybe. We'll see. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know who I don't know. She wants to vote for Xander, and you know she seemed pretty pissed with Deshaun. But yeah, maybe in that sense, then Deshaun ends up winning, right? Right. So I don't know if he would have won. I think what he needed to do is something earlier enough into the merge and uh, to change what the perception of was him. Uh, of him, the problem is he did not know what the perception of him was. Right. Uh, it clearly is that nobody uh, really thought that he was much of a player that he that that any of his moves or decisions were his own it was just constantly guided by things he was told by smarter and more importantly older players and this all gets back to uh we were right about the damn extra vote thing we're right about something this season i think if he would have done that it would have you know impressed people more because other than that his big impressive moment was fooling liana and I think enough of that got out through Ponderosa that's like, oh, man, he didn't do any of that. That was all our idea. But if he uses right. that extra vote, that's his idea. And I understand the thought. It's like, well, then that raises his profile. He's got a target. Well, you still have Ricard around. And you still have an idol. And I think a certain type of player, uh, if no, you're never a threat, if people are never viewing you as a threat, then they're never going to give you credit either. You, you know, under the radar is a strategy that can only be played by, you know, certain types of people. Right. And there was, speaking of that idol, like offering that to Ricard or even throwing that out as like a <laughs> thing that you might do and then pulling it away. Like, how fucking dumb are you? Yeah. Like, I was the strategy there like, oh, I know how to get this man's jury vote. I'll tell him that I could save him and then not save him. <laughs> like, yeah, um, I'm really connecting with you, man. I, I, I feel for you. I'm considering playing this idol and then I'm going to make you feel even worse because I brought it up that I might and I'm going to play it only for myself so that it'll hurt extra bad. <laughs> like, yeah, what the fuck was I that? can only hope that that was an emotional response to the moment and not him actually thinking there'd be some benefit of it. But like in that moment, he's feeling this. He just has this incredibly uh, personal moment for somebody that he has grown fond of. And he feels the need to say it. And that's a mistake, son. <laughs> you don't do yes. that. Because, yeah, and Ricard now in exit interviews is all like, I had to respect the game and all that. I, maybe. Absolutely. But nobody is immune to being that really bitter last juror. For that sure. That their win was just right there and you fucked it for me. Yep. Uh, frankly, that was one of the thoughts when they went to final three is that like the the third, the last person, that final three person seemed to always vote for the person who didn't vote them out. So at least at three, now, you know, the blame can get spread around a bit. Um, because yeah, it's not hard to imagine Ricard being pretty pissed at his dear friend Xander in that moment <laughs> and laying waste to him at Ponderosa, yep. you know? Again, and I don't know if that would have changed anything because I don't think anybody respected him. And to that, I would say, hey, uh, at least our long-standing theory that young people can't win Survivor holds up, and it doesn't just apply to women. So that's nice. So that was actually a big relief for me because as as much as I was like, oh, Xander's going to win, partly fueled by my cynicism, like, I didn't want him to win because I don't want the youth to win. <laughs> I want the show to stop casting people that are that young. <laughs> I mean, throw in a JD. Like, I, you can't I mean, JD down. will still be awesome at 22. That's what I'm, but I'm saying. Like, you know, it's like the NBA draft. Like, you got a chance to get a talent like that. Just go ahead. Do it now. Put him on TV now. You can always bring him back later. You know, that kid's got years left of his prime. But you may as well get him now while you can. So uh, the JD thing I understand Xander, Leanna, nah, you're fine. Just get some other people. Yeah, Leanna would be really interesting two years from now, too, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah no, I I agree. Because, like, they often don't add that much to the show. Uh, now, it's easy for me to say I'm not monitoring demographic trends in the audience and stuff. So I think there could be a very uh, business reason, right? Uh, especially, like, the young 
like guys frequently, uh, at least recently, maybe they're also kind of you know crush objects for certain viewers. Sure. I doubt that was the case for Will Wall or something. But what do I know? Right. Um, but it's just like yet. Yeah, Grown ass adults don't want to hand over a million dollars to children. And I mean, I laid it out earlier this season, uh, with Emma, I believe. So I should probably lay it out to you because there's no way you were listening. I was not. Is that, um, at that time in your life, you are not accustomed to adults being peers. They are your bosses. They are your parents. They are your teachers. Professors. They're not yeah. somebody. Yeah. They're not. They typically not, and maybe it's a little different for Xander because he's in the workforce more. Um, they're typically not, you know, peers. They're not your coworkers, you know, and, and that requires a level of relating to them that you just don't have yet because that's how life works. It's not your fault, but that's what this show is, you know. So it's just like, why the? I, there, I. He's an attractive dude, but I think he'll probably still be good looking in a couple of years. Yeah, he's like, not going to fall wait. apart in the next three years. Right. I mean, look at how, the chubby kid he was four years ago, which <laughs> I should note, not that chubby. but sure. quote unquote chubby kid. Again, certainly like some baby fat there. He wasn't yeah. as lean as he is now. That's called aging. Right. That's, 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 that's puberty struggle. finishing up, doing its thing. Oh, so, so you were an adolescent then. I get it. Um, and then you found something you were interested in. Like, this isn't like a ninja warrior where like they keep putting all these teenagers who are just destroying the competition. And it's like, well, I guess they do deserve there, but I still don't want to see them. Just stop it with the kids. So yeah, I, cause I don't know that the kid did much wrong. It's just nobody was going to respect him anyway, because he's a young guy and they're not necessarily wrong. Like the, the, their read on him probably being a little gullible might be accurate because they're adults and he's a child. Yep. Um, so speaking of those adults though, let's, let's briefly talk about Ricard because, um, I did enjoy Ricard and Ricard was my rooting interest that I immediately lost all hope in at the start yeah. of this episode. Oh, he, I mean, he had to win out. That was it. He had to win out. Right. That's not an impossible task. Uh, he needed to win one. And frankly, if Erica hadn't found that advantage, I think he would have. So that was the other thing is that they said, you know, the, the thing is going to give you a slight advantage in the challenge. Holy shit, it did half the challenge for you. Yes. How is that slight? I mean, I guess you argue that the puzzle is generally more than half. But sure. It, well, she, it gave her a significant lead, and that looked to, to be the difference. And yes. look, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If an advantage doesn't give you an advantage, then what the fuck are we doing here? Right, absolutely. But uh, at the same it time... Was a slight. Yeah, I was going to say, like, oh, just your, your choice of adjective there was a little odd. Um... But sure, you know, and it, like you said, that was all she really needed to win by a slight margin. So, um, and what she needed to win also was to remove Ricard. You yep. know, like as soon as Ricard was out of the game, she was the front runner, and then she just needed somebody to do something stupid like bring her to, uh, you know, the finals. So <laughs> check, check. Yes, without exerting at all on her own, without putting in any of her own efforts to get there. So, well done. Yeah, no, and you I can't thought even Ricard say was that. A- you can't even say that, like, her getting into that final tribal was a social move. It was, she talked to Xander for two minutes and he's like, I, just so you know, I don't even need to finish talking to anybody else. Yeah, I'm bringing with, I'm bringing you with me. And it's like, okay. So that was clearly not a moment where Erica convinced him. He was just already set on this idea. Yeah, and it's just, just this big brain thing. Like, uh, there's so, even when he finally explained it to the jury, they're like, oh, well, that's an explanation that makes sense. That's something. It's not going to change. It's, it's, so it's less stupid than we thought. Yeah, it exactly. was their basic reaction to it. Um, it's like, yeah, that's a dumb idea, but I, I get what you're doing there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I thought Ricard was the best player. Uh, I do think, you know, he himself and the show might have overdone it. Oh my <laughs> right God. The end. He leaned pretty hard and then it's in like, a- it was kind of one of those things where, like, I'm on board with you. Like, yeah, you know what? You did. You gave it your all. You, like, outdid what you thought you could do. You know, you really played well. And then he's like, okay, but I'm going to keep gilding this a little. Anyway, I think I might be one of the best players of all time and then not win. I'm like, wow, okay. And Probst is like, yeah, man, we've some of the best players ever have not won. And I'm like, that is accurate. I don't know that Ricard can lump himself in with those people just yet, though. I mean, but, and I, mean I enjoyed Ricard, too, but, like, 
Ooh, wow, that's some interesting company you're lumping yourself in with. To be fair, this was the hardest season of Survivor oh, ever, man. TM. The, the Every best. time somebody said that, it's like, that you've ever been in. How You guys don't know, man. The... Your entire experience of playing Survivor is this. I... You know what? I actually enjoyed that because they did it multiple times. So they said does. several times, like, this is the hardest season of Survivor ever. And my glee, like, I would light up every time they do it just because I could picture all the former Survivors angrily tweeting away, like, arr, arr, back in my day. Like, you know, Eliza was just incensed. Uh, it was great. I That's the yeah. one thing that I got out of that. I was like, oh, yeah, just piss <laughs> those former Survivors off. It's so good. <laughs> And whatever, man. The show wants to hear it. You might yep. as well say it. Exactly. And, and I don't deny it was hard. It was probably really hard, but I suspect all first time players like theirs was the hardest season ever. Yep. Uh, yeah. And then sometimes when they return, I was like, oh man, that was nothing. This is the truth. So we're made, and sometimes it's actually so much easier than my first time around. Um, yeah. So I thought he overdid it. And honestly, it reminded me of why early on I didn't have Ricard as the best. And that's fine. He probably wasn't then. He got better. But, um, he has a very strong ego. And I don't mind that. <laughs> It'd be nope. really weird if I did. But, uh, I do think that was potentially what it was going to be as one of his greater flaws is that, like, he clearly just thought he was better than everybody. And, yeah, it just so happened that in that moment it was true. But it was just like, okay, okay, dial it back. And also, the show could probably dial it back a bit here. He doesn't need the, you know, Santra of getting voted out a Game Changers moment here. He, <laughs> he, he was the first time player who made it to the final five. Good for you. All right. Uh, all right, another finalist. Uh, where did it all go wrong for Deshaun? Oh, where didn't it all go wrong for Deshaun? <laughs> um, I mean, so one thing that I can think where it went all wrong for Deshaun was trying to throw a challenge very early on. <laughs> Because the scoreboard seems to indicate that it might have helped him if they had been successful in doing that. And as much as I enjoyed that moment, um, man, it was, it was really good. Him and Danny were excellent narrators of that moment. Like, oh, yeah, in hindsight, I guess that was important for different reasons other than comedy. So that's one uh, area where he here, went here, all wrong. Here's another thing that we got right because uh, we got so much wrong this season. Uh, how about that intentional Matt Singh theory, though? Because... <laughs> Uh, for one, none of the people on UA made the finals, uh, so there's that. Uh, but for two, the winner of the season almost certainly would have gone home if she had gone to Tribal Council once. Yep. Just once. I mean, maybe not if it was the first ones. Maybe she wasn't in danger then. It would have been this year or whatever. But they were trying. <laughs> her tribemates were trying to go to Tribal Council to get rid of her. So avoiding Tribal Council was actually pretty effing important. So... You know, take your theory and stuff it. Uh, yeah, that is one way it went wrong for Deshaun. And actually, you know, on, on that same note, cause they've, they've shown, you know, the, the near miss thing for winners before. Like we've seen, um, Nick in, uh, David vs. Goliath, the very first episode, we see that like Nick might have been the target of their very first vote, right? But then they don't end up having a vote. So it's not some new and novel thing to suggest that, oh, you know, this, this winner was actually very lucky. They could have gotten taken out at X point in the season. It just felt like it, it, her edit did not go on to then shine after that. You know, there was not like a gradual improvement arc. It just sort of plateaued. Yeah, they wanted to do that. They wanted to vote her out at the merge. And then bigger fish to fry, right? And it, good kudos right. to her for like not letting that sink her game. I mean, it also ha so happened that um, not long after that, she's in a split tribal council where she has one of two immunities and there aren't that many people to vote. Like, people were right, man. The advantages and the twist affected things so much. It just, maybe uh, we need all of those things to finally allow a woman to win Survivor. Um, yeah, uh, I think another thing that went totally wrong for Deshaun, it, and, and actually the hourglass twist didn't help, Suddenly, he was, was went from immune to not. Um, that threw him and his uh, partner for a loop, but it also forced him to vote out Sydney. Right. Um, instead of saying Erica. far more Erica. loyal to him than Erica was, yes. Yeah. Um, which then forced him more into that four-person alliance, which ultimately was the worst thing for everybody who was in it. Yes. And so let's briefly comment on that, because I, we had suggested, and you very correctly suggested that it's 
probably going to hurt much more if people think you're betraying a cause and not just playing a game. And Shan explicitly said basically that exact same thing at Final Tribal Council. So bravo to you because, yeah, she seemed legitimately hurt. And I think I had said this last week. It it seemed like with that sourpuss, like she was not putting on an act. Like she was legitimately burned by him much deeper than one would normally be for just being betrayed, right? Like it was a a larger societal thing that she's attributing this to rather than just Deshaun needed to advance and beat her in a game. And oof, that was really bad because I I think, you know, obviously he got Danny's vote. It didn't get Danny that hard, but I think at a certain point, even if he could have gotten Shan's vote, just she had that to stew on for so long. She, you're not bringing her back. Yeah, and some people will point that the mistake was ever voting her out. There's a point to that. I think the mistake, the bigger mistake was forming that alliance in the first place. But just, I get why. I get why they'd want to do it. I cannot relate to what it must feel like for them in that moment and the things uh, that it felt good to do. But, like, man, you haven't even met these people yet, man. You don't know how you're going to get along with Shan. And the answer was not very well at all, right? <laughs> exactly. And so once you form that, and then it turns out that both it's breaking this is a blood oath that sunk him completely, but also that you do not want to be going to the end with Shan. And also that, uh, you know, making this oath apparently came with the cost of Ricard as well. And, you know, suggesting otherwise was in itself breaking the oath. That's where it all fell apart. And that's where he also got more testy. And thus all the things that, you know, they talk about temper tantrums. I don't think he was throwing those as much early in the game, at least not from what we see. And all we can talk about really is what we saw. You know, when, in the other games, when like it seemed like, hey, just so you know, Nasir's trying to vote you out, he'd like laugh and be like, ah, mm-hmm. okay, that's interesting. And then he'd go on and work with, uh, you know, Nasir. But, you know, when him and uh, Shan had varying different strategies and how they wanted to do it, that was just butting heads for both of them. You know, and I think they had it pointed the fingers more at her, but it's clear, also him. Mm-hmm. But. It's his game. If he wants to play his game, then you need to find people like Danny. Danny helped and enhanced his game. Shan did not. Ricard was just dangerous. Uh, so I think just forming that alliance was a big uh, problem. And yeah, easy for me to say, because I will never be accused of selling out my people. You know, <laughs> I that's not a thing that's ever going to happen to me in life. I suppose if I were in certain parts, you know, then, you know, I could be considered a traitor or whatever, but I wouldn't care what those people think. I'd be like, hey, right. badge of water. Um, maybe the Canadian people, but fuck, I sell those people out every time I yell at you on a microphone and people are like, what kind of Canadian is this? Yeah. Like, so it's easy for me to say, but it's clear, man. Like that kid had no chance at tribal council because the betrayal was so deep. And then it just fed into every other betrayal. Like that was the mood. So now like Evie gets to feel betrayed. It's like, why? Because you guys hiked up a mountain together, you know? Um, yeah, Heather, like everybody felt betrayed and he was, to be fair, doing a lot of betrayal here or there. Yeah. Um, but often you can do that in survivor. Uh, Erica never had to. So credit to her and that helps. But, you know, usually it's not as bad, but, like, the betrayals that he did and the way that he did it um, just was was just too much for everybody there. And, of course, he didn't do himself a favor with that whole truth bomb last week. I, we identified it. It was a bad idea. We it were, was. Uh, and one thing I did find interesting, though, is the way they coded um, his game. And he even said he's an yes. emotional player. And then, like, the temper tantrum things. These are not normally descriptions of a male's game. So I was like, oh, okay. So there is some evolution here. Something is happening. Um, It's clearly not enough. But at the same time, like, you know, all these sorts of criticisms are the things that normally get leveled about a woman's game. Too emotional, too rash, to whatever it might have been. Instead, not only got applied to Deshaun by other people, Deshaun basically acknowledged, like, yeah, you know what? I, I am that man. <laughs> I, I am too emotional. Um, he did deny the temper tantrum thing. Um, but it, it was interesting to me just to see that narrative even thrown out there as a suggestion. 
Because I don't feel like yeah. older Survivor would have done that. I think it's a fair criticism about Deshaun and um, the way he would react to things. I don't know that uh, Shan got to throw those stones as right. much in her glass house. Uh, because I have not detected a whole lot of uh, self-reflection in that direction. But whatever. She's a juror. She gets to make the vote. He has to d- defend himself. And um, yeah, there was no chance. And he knew it. Um, right. So let's All talk right. about the final person in this final tribal council. The one, you know, I like that we're giving about as much attention to her as the show did. Hey, well, Erica we did talk about it for quite a bit in the beginning. That's true. That's true. But so let's let's talk about Erica winning. Like her win, did it feel like there were signs of it to you? Like now you've seen the full run of the season. Can you be like, oh, you know, I can point to this and this and this and see – yeah, Erica was the winner, and I can see how her game evolved and progressed. Did you get that feeling? I think she stood there while everybody else fell. It's one yep. of those speed skating, short scratch speed skating races where it's just a big crash and then somebody else comes through, uh, which is – this is not the first time that, that has happened. No, it's certainly um, not. But anything else, like, man – they said a tribal council that her social game was limited to one person. Like, that is not a good thing, except that in these two people, all the people that they related to either felt deeply betrayed or didn't think much of you. So it's like, well, I guess preserving the mystery helped. <laughs> it's just like, imagine playing the game with your whole goal being like, I'm going to be a fucking cipher to these people. They have no idea who I am. And then that working. That Wild. often results in nothing, right? They, like, they don't even ask you questions. But for her, yeah, it worked out. And again, it it's not that she didn't do anything. Uh, yeah, she said she voted correctly uh, the whole time. Sure. Cool. Uh, that it's sometimes really good. Sometimes nobody gives a shit about that. Troy Zan voted correctly every single time, I believe, as well in Game Changers. Did not matter. Did not impress anybody. Uh, nor should it have. Um yeah, no, I, like, I do think she had ideas. I do think, you know, like, keeping Ricard around versus Liana, I think that was, yeah, you know, Xander had his defensive shield. I think for her it made sense as well in that Liana is not somebody who seems to have any interest in working with me. Uh, Ricard does, and we've built a relationship. Although, again, I, I think he was the one who said that she had, oh, he said that, like, only Heather, but apparently, I, I think he was not including himself, but he said that they had a relationship. I don't know. Because he was so, clearly I, stumping for her. Um, this is like, let other people know what you were doing. And yeah, her so, uh, she came, I, I think she spun it well in that, oh, that's not just what the social game is. Uh, not, the social game just isn't getting to know people and knowing them. It's whatever it was she was doing. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I, I don't even want to criticize because I missed so much of her game, but I, I don't want to just also like attribute stuff because I feel like that's what was happening. She was fine. The winner is often just fine. The justification felt a little bit like Chrissy being like, I had an amazing social game. Like, I know that your cousin's name is whatever. And and they're like, that's not you. Just memorize fucking trivia. (laughs) Like, Erica's was even worse. It was like, I barely know you. (laughs) Did we meet? I mean, like, we had a shared meal together. I'm not even sure that we talked. Um, So, it's certainly In a season where everybody's betraying their allies, the... No allied uh, person is queen, I guess. I don't know. I, I, sure. Um, but, I mean, it, even then, like, with the hindsight of having watched this whole season, it just, it doesn't feel like an Erica win. I, I don't, it didn't land for me. And even the stuff, like, I think she did a phenomenal job at Final Tribal Council. Again, in a relative sense, those other guys were just stumbling all over themselves. But at the same time, it was still a good final tribal council performance. Yeah, I thought she did well. I also don't know if that turned more than one vote. Right. I think it turned to Sears' vote. Maybe. Um, he, uh, apparently, he told her that that was happening. Uh, <laughs> but I think everybody else had already decided that they weren't voting for those other guys. Um, and that she was the next best option after Ricard. And they have their reasons. I don't know what they are because people weren't really talking. They They, they mentioned that she was sneaky a bit. Uh, a few episodes ago. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I there's think... a theory out there that like, you know, maybe a more female jury uh, wanted to undo this turn. And if that's the case, I mean, good for them, man. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there haven't been male jurors in the past. You're like, I'm only voting for a man. So it's not, I don't find that personally offensive. No. And especially uh, like I, we mentioned 
millennials versus Gen X earlier. Like Adam and Hannah were not significantly different as players, but Adam won in a shutout. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, and I'm not sure they would have voted for Heather over, you know, I actually don't know what would have happened if it was Heather. Um, I'm pretty confident they would have voted for Ricard no matter what. So it's like it wasn't just that. It's that they didn't want to vote for the two dudes. And, you know, Heather didn't give them a reason not to. And, again, yeah, I do think she performed well at Tribal Council. I'm just always dubious of how much that matters. Also very amused that you continue to confuse Heather and Erica. Heather and Erica, huh? There we go. Erica, she Erica, did win Erica. the season, which, again, would normally be a memorable point but you know I, i'm giving you credit here buddy it, it it did not feel like a win <laughs> all right like, so. it did not feel like a win like I, I don't feel like this was illegitimate and not no. just in the way that i never feel like it's illegitimate the jury decides that's how the game is decided it's just you know it was fine you know like neither of the other two finalists would have felt like a good winner you know um well, it, however of course if they had won they would have felt differently by the time they got there yeah, I think fine. that one of the things that jumped out to me is that, you know, we talked about how those other guys in like in a relative sense, they made Erica look better because they'd stumbled and fallen so many times or otherwise just did not have respect. But Erica didn't want to take Heather to the end. And that was like legit. Like she's apologizing to Heather. Like, why not just lie? Yeah. Oh, I, I actually hit pause to talk to my wife about that. It's like, why is she validating what right. Sean was saying? Just say, I was lying to him. That guy's full of shit. Yes. But she admitted to it, so it was real? Yeah. She's like, oh, you're not mad at me, are you? Wait, no. Why? Again, that's just, like, that's the winner? The winner gets this content where she's admitting that she made a massive mistake. And, like, not only that, but not only was it a massive mistake that she got caught in doing so but more importantly she was not gonna take heather to the end what the fuck well again that gets to my point of maybe there needed to be more heather content before now I mean, maybe she was a real contender maybe if xander had taken out erica he would have lost to her i don't know I, I can't at this point deny that the show hit that as well you know they, they clearly focused on um uh, uh zero zero vote getter xander like yeah, that kid had no chance and the they didn't like they didn't even mention that he didn't that they had an extra vote that you remember that i don't know if we talked about uh, it. we should have I, if yeah. we didn't we definitely should have uh so yeah like in terms of like heather like historical comp in many ways i i mean for one yada yada we don't actually rank winners uh but sure. we sometimes ballpark it at the end of the season I just, my point is i don't know man like whatever she did well because the jury seemed very in favor of her uh, heading into tribal council, like final tribal, like in that four, as soon as he's like, I don't think about Heather. And they're all like, Ooh, that's wrong, buddy. That's the one you need to take out. Uh, again, so Erica, assuming like, she yes. did some good freaking hell. <laughs> Why that? I'm, let's re record this whole thing. I, I, I'm editing. I'm just going to throw Erica every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm assuming Erica did some other stuff that I don't know. Uh, that's I'll, I'll give her that. Uh, I'm not going to invent things as the years go by. I'm probably not going to care that much about, like, two-hour-long interviews that suggest these things. But I am mildly curious of, like, what did she do more than not the bad things that the other two guys did? And maybe maybe that's just it. Yep. In which case, lower-tier winner, because that's how I feel about anybody who wins by default. I mean, we just had an election in my country where it was like, uh, well, I mean, you're certainly not someone I'd want to vote for, but... The alternative is not anyone that I ever would vote for, so it's you. So, you know, I get the rationale. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, what do you think of that after show thing? Um, not bad. I mean, I think there is something to what Probst was saying, where like, yeah, the um emotions are still fresh, you're getting them when they're raw and oh, phrasing. Um But like it is potentially a more interesting time to talk to them because they haven't had time to watch the entire season play out. They, you know, certain things might not be evident to the players at that time. You know, a lot of times um, they're like, for instance, throwing the challenge to take Erica out Erica at that final, you know, 
um, the after show thing. She's not going to know that. She's not going to know that until she's come back and watched the season and she's going to be like, oh my God, they're going to take me out there. So it, you could potentially get interesting things where they're admitting in the moment, like, oh, by the way, we were going to do this then. And you know, you can see people getting hit with these realizations in real time, having not seen the show and not talked to each other afterwards. So that could be cool. I mean, it's it's something I'm willing to give a chance to. Yeah, I mean, the live reunion sucks so hard that it almost couldn't help but be improved. Upon. Right. Um, the big thing is those two losers. That's rough, man. Yep. They just learned that they had lost and hadn't had months to like kind of know that they are coming. Like most people go into the finale having a pretty good idea whether they won or lost. Every once in a while, there's a loop, especially if somebody like lies to them or something in, in a close vote. But like they are processing it that, and some of them are processing it like realizing how bad tribal council, and then it's like, all right, now let's sit here and be jovial. So you know, I think it's tough for Deshaun and Xander. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was all right. I thought just the novelty of it helped it feel fresher than what had been it just interminable. The other thing that helps is it's edited. You know, yes. Uh, I don't think that we got every single minute of footage. They talked about a bunch of stuff, and then that way they could edit in the stories that they now know that were the stories of the season. That's the other thing. It's not just the the contestants that don't know what the story is. You know, Jeff Probst and the uh, producers don't fully know what the story will be. You know, obviously they had their beats and all of that, and they probably have some idea of how things were shaping up, but it also helps lead to uh, Probst's questions. A lot of it was more determined on what he knew at that moment, which was incomplete. So I thought it was all right. I don't, I don't suspect it'll be a forever thing. I could even see that in 42, they decide, no, we'll be okay to like have a live reunion. Interestingly, uh, they would have been more okay to have a live reunion for this show than necessarily <laughs> they will be this time next year. Like if they had done it, they definitely would have had a live reunion yesterday. Yep. Next week, maybe not. Uh, who knows? Welcome to season three of COVID, folks. This is, um... <laughs> That's right. Um, so overall though, not just this episode, but what would you think about the season as a whole? So before the season even started, in fact, I think at the tail end of last season, I said what I most wanted out of the next season of Survivor was no assholes. Yep. That the show would not make me hate spending time with these people. In fact, I needed to spend time with people I wanted to spend time with because that was at a time when we weren't spending time with anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Um I think it accomplished that. I thought week to week, I enjoyed the experience of watching the show. I enjoyed the experience of spending time with this, um, this cast. Uh, I do think the end of it kind of calls into question some of you know, what I was feeling throughout the season. Because I just think it's such a major misstep and disservice to the winner and the story of uh, what we got. So I think that knocks it down. But by and large, I, I enjoyed it. It was all right. It was a pretty mid mid range, yep. which is pretty good in considering in comp comparison to some of the stuff we've gotten recently. What do you think? Yeah, and it, it's honestly we've we've set the Panama line before, and this had some parallels to Panama. Like there was an interesting cast, an underwhelming winner. There were some like plot lines that I enjoyed, some things that I they didn't, some twists that didn't work out well. You know, all those things roughly similar between the two seasons and so that's what i would say I, I enjoyed it as it was playing out i'm glad that it was not an interminable fucking slog as some recent seasons have been um the bar was nice and low and really what i wanted was to just enjoy the show again it like you said the spending time with the characters yeah that was important but more it's just i wanted to be able to look forward to the episodes i knew it was not going to hit in the same way that Winners at War did, because for a lot of reasons, Winners at War had nostalgia tied in. We were hitting with a hit with a pandemic at that time. And so like, we're all fixated, like, Oh my God, I need this in my life. Like this was much more like, okay, this, this is our signal that we're, we're coming out of this. We're making progress. We're clearly not, but it felt like it should be right. So you wanted that hopeful kind of feeling. And I think it mostly delivered on that. There were a few things that I didn't love, but overall, it was very positive. I thoroughly enjoyed certain players on this season, JD especially. I'm still going to beat the drum to get JD back in as many seasons as possible. That kid was gold. What a fucking find. Um, star quality was limited. I mean, 
Shan was pretty good. I enjoyed her. I don't know that she'd be great coming back. Ricard, also pretty good. I don't know that he'd be super great as a returnee. Um, so yeah, overall, it's just the people like JD, Nasir, maybe Evie as returnees. But for the most part, I don't even care necessarily who returns. I just enjoyed the cast as a whole. Yeah, I enjoyed watching this every Wednesday. I enjoyed discussing it every Thursday and Thursday night. Uh, every week. Even though, you know, this twist sucked weeks. Was still, like, I was never like that upset with the show. I don't even know if I ever got that upset with the fandom, which is unique to me. A lot of that has to do with really selective filtering uh, that I've done over the year. Uh, I, by the way, highly recommend this to anybody. If you find that you're getting too worked up about you know, this show or maybe anything that you're a fan of, dial it back. You know, you don't need to engage so heavily. Uh, I think when we were, you know, first getting ramped up, um, probably like not the first couple seasons, but like the, the site is almost like now we're like, Oh, what's our off season content? And we're going to publish all this stuff. And I followed, you know, a lot of the people in the community and I followed a bunch of survivors just when I was like launching my account. And now I filter that thing out all the time to the point where sometimes somebody could just like tweet for the first time in a while. Like, why the hell am I following this person? <laughs> nope. Um, yeah, so I recommend that to people. You don't need to engage that level. This is just a TV show. I thought it was a good TV show. And frankly, like if either A, we have a different winner that felt like it was a part of most of the season that had taken place before then, then I'd be like, hey, this is great. Or, and now I'm just like, I just wish that the winner we got was in more of it. Like, it, it just taints a bit of the earlier stuff that I know that this show, like, did such a disservice to the winner. But watching it throughout, I didn't know that because I didn't know that was the winner. I didn't know the winner was being buried when I was watching it. So, you know, I, I enjoyed it and I'm, I'm looking forward to another season. Yeah. And uh, I think ultimately I'm not going to care all that much about the winner because I still think Millennials versus Gen X was a great season and I find Adam boring as shit. Um, it's so. the sexism though, John. That's the thing. If they did this just to another fucking dude. Uh, well, again, I don't think they ever do it to a dude. So for me, it's that like this, I feel like this is an insult to like women that they continually do this to women winners. And it gives me a problem about the show. Like it's a bitter aftertaste to swallow. That's fair. Uh, that's where it's at. Like that, the winner isn't that interesting. Whatever, man. But they should be in your fucking TV show. It should probably be important that, uh, and, uh again, or if this was the kind of show that frequently did that, and it's just like, hey, man, sometimes people win. You don't know. Uh, then that'd be fine. But it's one type that they do this to, and it's not infrequent, yeah. and that's bullshit. Not a great trend. Um, by the way, I will never give up my ironic Twitter followers how, or follows. How dare you? <laughs> don't I know, because I log into the site one, and that's when I get worked up. It's so good. And I'm on the Purple Rock podcast, at Purple Rock Pod. You can follow on Twitter instead of at Purple Rock Andy. And then I see all these people. I'm like, why do these people still watch a thing that they hate to the core of their souls? Oh. And then that's when I end up yelling at you guys on the podcast. Although, speaking of Millennials versus Gen X, one of my favorite ironic follows ever. Ken is, is a left, he's left Twitter. He's not around. It, God, that guy was so great to follow on Twitter. Just the I best. Mean, I, I always support anybody leaving Twitter, but why did you rob us of your inspirational quote? Oh my God. <laughs> so fun. Uh, anyway, Ken, come back into our lives, please. Um, all right. So speaking of that website and that Twitter account that you were talking about, do we have anything else before we get to some plugs here? Uh, no, uh, I think that's it for the season. Uh, if people want to make fun of us for getting everything wrong, uh, you can do that on our website, purplerockpodcast.com, where we also ran like some kind of fantasy game, right? We did. Um, congratulations to Blurry, Zen Blurry Denzel, the winner of our Champions League. Um, you can see the fantasy standings on our site. We had some longtime commenters who did very well, and we'll get to participate in that Champions League next season. Um, I don't have the list in front of me. I'll shout you out in comments on the sites, but you already got that. So anyway, purplerockpodcast.com is where you can find all of that. You can find the show pod or Twitter account at purple rock pod. Andy, as mentioned is purple rock, Andy. And in a branding masterpiece, I am purple rock, John, anything else, Andy. See you for 42. Hit the theme music. Oh, Canada. 
our home and native land true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see the rise the true north strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free oh canada we stand on guard for thee oh canada we stand on guard for